The word career is a verb. It means to move in an uncontrolled way, which pretty much describes my career over the last 30 years. Um, the notion that we can control our careers or, or plan them seems silly to me. Let's see a show of hands. How many of you, straight out of school, had a career plan which you followed straight into the career that you were involved in today? How many? Okay. And how many of you, like me, blundered about and muddled through and somehow wound up doing what you're doing today? Okay. So, can we say goodbye to career planning? The, um, today, I'd, I'd like to uh, share with you a very important discovery that I made about careers, as well as a tool, a wonderful tool, which changed my life and which I think could really help you magnify your power of one. The story starts in university. I graduated and I was clueless as to what I was going to do in my career. I knew only two things. Number one, that the world of business and offices and suits was of no interest to me. It seemed like a, a, a one-way ticket to a boring life. And I craved excitement. The other thing I knew was I had a band, I loved music, and we were going to be rock stars. <laughs> so, for several years I played music, until I found out that, no, we were not going to be rock stars. And in fact, I didn't like being broke all the time and working at night, and I was more of a yuppie, as you can see, that, than I had thought I was. So I turned to the next thing that excited me which was the Japanese language. I'd studied this at university. And once again, craving excitement, I moved to Japan. I was still clueless. But this time, I set a provisional goal for myself. I, I said, I'm going to become a professional Japanese to English translator. And I did. And I was really lousy at that. <laughs> but after translating a few thousand pages, I started to catch on to the principles of good professional writing, and I found that I enjoyed it, and I, I made a good living at, at it. And so I did that for several years. But after a time, I, I started to feel that there were... I had other skills and some other parts of my personality that needed to see the light of day. And so in a moment of weakness, I took a corporate job with a Fortune 100 company, which made me into a junior bureaucrat doing corporate planning. And I soon discovered that, you know, I had been right the first time around. I was not made for the world of organizations and suits and conventional business. And so, once again, craving excitement, I moved on. By this time, I had become a very heavy PC and email user. And in 1994, I got my first dial-up internet account. And I discovered the World Wide Web. Now, at that time, the web didn't have any images. There was no pictures. Uh, it was all text. But the very first time I, I went online, I was astounded. I found myself in a French library. And I'm still astounded today that on your own computer, you can browse documents that were located half a world away. And the first thing I saw, I, the first thing I thought when I saw this was, how, how do you do this in Japanese? Because I looked all over the World Wide Web and there was no Japanese language World Wide Web to be seen. And immediately it struck me, may, maybe I could have a, a small role in developing this Japanese language web. And I wanted to spend all my time on this very interesting issue, so I decided, well, I, I have to start a company. 
So I, I, I told everyone, I'm going to start a company doing Japanese language online marketing and marketing research for US and European companies that want to enter these markets. Now, I, I didn't think I was going to make much money doing this, uh, which was a good thing because there was absolutely no demand whatsoever for my new service. <laughs> But we we stuck with it for a couple. We stuck with it, and we got a few clients. And then in 1997, Amazon.com engaged us to create their first Japanese language web pages and to do all their banner advertising in Japan. After that, we started getting some very interesting work from companies that wanted to implement or even replicate their business models in Japan and elsewhere in Asia. Now, as time went by, these business models became more and more strange. And、uh, by late 1999, I found myself in Silicon Valley listening to 23 year old paper millionaires telling me how they wanted to sell dog food online in China. <laughs> and they were getting more and more excited. And I was getting less and less excited. Fortunately, we soon,、uh, soon after that, we got a multi million dollar buyout offer from a NASDAQ listed entity, which I accepted. That was a positive experience. <clears throat> And、uh, <laughs> I,、uh, as a condition of the deal, I worked for the new owner for a couple years. but... By the end of that, I'd been working so hard for eight years and I was completely burnt out on this internet stuff、uh, websites and email and internet enabled cell phones and blogs. And so I left and I took a year off, during which time I, I dreamt of a world, a world where this internet and computer fad had blown over and we were all. Communicating face to face and writing letters with pens and papers like real human beings should.、Uh, such a world was not to be. But I also went into a midlife crisis because my company was gone and I, I had nothing to do. So for, for the first time in my life, I, I started to become very thoughtful about my career and very deliberate about my career. And this is when I formulated the Tim Clark theory of career development. It goes something like this Picture yourselves coming out of school. You come out of school, you get any job you can. If it doesn't drive you crazy, you keep doing it. <laughs> okay? If it drives you crazy, try something else. So, Now, as the years go by, you become more thoughtful and you, the question changes. The question becomes Does this job excite me? And if so, well, you do it some more and you, you go deeper.、Okay? And if not, well, you, you move on and you try something else.、Okay? I think this is the default method by which many of us develop our careers. The problem is we, we stay too long. In some positions, and when we move on, we don't move on at the right time or in the optimal way. But I decided, well, what, I looked back over these past eight years and longer, and I thought, what, what activities did I really enjoy? And I, well, I enjoyed、uh, teaching and training and writing and researching. Well, what occupation combines those things? Well, university professor. So I decided to become a university professor. And the first thing I wanted to teach was entrepreneurship. Because I had just been through this eight year whirlwind of activity, and I was fortunate to be able to do something that most people never get to do. And I wanted to understand and articulate the, the lessons I'd learned and share those with other people. Because when I started, I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship, I didn't even know that people sold companies. So, I started studying entrepreneurship formally and I started teaching. And that formal study confirmed some things that I had intuitively felt as an entrepreneur, but I hadn't been able to articulate. For example, when you start a venture, ordinarily you have an idea about what kind of value you're going to create 
and how you're going to deliver that value to a specific set of customers. And that logic is called a business model. But what almost every entrepreneur discovers is that the initial business model they have in mind doesn't work. When you go out in the market and you try it, you've got to change it. Sometimes you have to completely reinvent it. So entrepreneurship is not about writing a business plan and then implementing that plan. Entrepreneurship is about hypothesizing a business model and then testing that model and validating or, or tweaking it in the marketplace. Okay. Now, around this same time, I had a, another fundamental insight, and that is that our own careers are a form of entrepreneurship. And in fact, just as a venture has an organizational business model, we, as individuals, have what I call a personal business model. And by that, I mean the logic by which we create and deliver value to a specific set of customers. And just as organizations must hypothesize a business model and test it, we as individuals, we don't plan and execute, we hypothesize and then we test. And sometimes in a very inefficient way. So the age of planning is, is dead, and it has been for years. We live in an age of modeling. As I continue my, my doctoral studies on business models, I encountered the work of two wonderful researchers who live right here in Switzerland. Many of you know them, Alexander Osterwalder and Yves Pignure. Wonderful people. And they had just started writing a book based on a, a tool they had created called the Business Model Canvas. And I became involved in that book, and in fact, I, I became the editor of this book. And that's when my life changed once again. It was one day, as I was sitting down and working on the book, I took this tool, the Business Model Canvas, and I thought, well, I'm going to try to apply this to me as an individual. And so I took that tool and I created what I call a personal business model. And when I did that, the results were just stunning. Because here, for the first time, was a visual and a logical and a simple yet powerful way to describe and articulate the logic by which we as individuals create and deliver value to our customers. And when I did this for myself, I suddenly got a lot of clarity around my own career and where to go with it. And I was very fortunate being able to, as a result of this, uh, create value for many, many more people than I ever thought I would be able to, which, of course, is the essence of entrepreneurship. I, I'm convinced that if I had had this tool as a, as a younger man, it wouldn't have taken me 30 years to be here telling you about it. It probably would have only taken 27 years. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to encourage you to try creating your own personal business model. Use it to design the most important business model in the world. And that's business model you. And then use it to magnify your power of one.